Hey, what's up? It's Schnell. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today's video is brought to you by Kiki Mora. And we're going to be going over Cursed Fires That Burn Forever, released on Spirit Guide, sent to me by the band. There's a download thing I have not used. I guess you need a, I, I don't know, maybe if you put your phone up to it, you can download it. Give it a try. Let me know if it works. But anyways, you get four tracks. And this is kind of not, well, it's actually very, very much not something I listen to. It's very jazzy. Kind of over the top. And, like, sometimes I like, you know, I, I'll be dead honest, like, early Dillinger Escape Plan, like, Dillinger up to Miss Machine, which I feel was kind of them, like, hey, we like Nine Inch Nails, so let's add a little bit of Nine Inch Nails influence, and I feel like the outcome of Miss Machine, yeah, I, I, I love that record. But when it comes to, like, jazzy, progressive music, I am extremely, extremely picky. And I appreciate the musicianship and everything, but it's just not really my cup of tea. Reminds me a lot of this band, though, I Repress. I Repress used to be on Translation Lost like, in the mid-2000s. But, like, they would take, like, the theme from the Goonies and then, like, prog it out. But, like, it, it was really interesting. Like, it was legitimately, like, uh, the record's called Samus Octology. It, like, I remember it because I liked it. It was memorable. It wasn't just a lot of noodling and look at how good I am at reading music. You don't know guitar theory? And then there's like a kind of like, like sounds like new metal. I'm sorry, but to me, first thing that comes to my head when I hear jazz mixed with like a breakdown type thing, it just, I'm sorry, but I hear like, just like, you know, red hat, you know, 1999 UFO pants. Just, I don't know. That was the first thing that popped in my head after I finished Kiki Mora's EP, Curse Fires That Burn Forever. But like I said, music. Musically, I appreciate just the fact I couldn't play a single note of this if you held a weapon to my head. Couldn't do it. Like, there's even some parts that sound like CKY. It, it's weird, but like, like I heard a couple of parts. I was like, that sounds like a... Like C like, I don't know. It, it's weird... And not really my thing. But if you want me to review your music physically. Like I checked it out digitally. But I, I didn't go too deep into it. Because I don't like spoiling it. Again, this channel works off of physical media. Otherwise, every single day I would be like... I, I just... All right, today we're going to talk about, you know, trying to think of something, like, super, like, rare or something. I, I don't know, but, like, you know what I mean. I'm just drawing, like, a dead blank right now. But if you like jazzy, progressive, like, metal, you, 
you're probably gonna really like uh, Kikimura and Curse Fires that burn forever. Like, there's no, like, parts where I'm really, like, legit invested, though. Again, so it's just... I'm not the biggest fan to begin with when it comes to progressive, jazz-infused metal. It's just, it to me, it normally 9 out of 10 times ends up sounding like a s form of new metal. But, again, I do appreciate the musicianship, and I kind of wish, and I, I'm guessing maybe... They do have a real death metal band or black metal band or anything like that. Because I'm a big, like, dysrhythmia fan. And if I'm remembering this correctly, if I'm not, I apologize to Kikimura. But I could have swore one of the bands besides, like, King Crimson, they said they were influenced by was uh was that and I would say um like I wouldn't say dysrhythmia but I'm trying to think of like it's not as like off the walls as uh psychosis that was the name of the band I was been trying to think of there was a record label, it was a sub-label of Metal Blade that guy from the Red Cord ran called Black Market Activity. And they had a lot of bands that, like, weren't big enough to be on Metal Blade yet. So, like, if I remember correctly, you had, like, Premonitions of War and, like, uh, stuff like that, but they, like another band I remember distinctly was was um Psychosis, and they had like a more imagine a very raw version of the Dillinger Escape Plan. That's what it kind of was, and their live show was like just pure like entertaining violence. They would beat the shit out of each other, but uh. Anyways, so when I listen to, you know, more jazz influence metal, I kind of have these expectations that are kind of unachievable. And then you might be like, wait, but you love Blood Incantation. Completely different story. Now, if... Let's say, you know, when the new Blood Incantation full length comes out, it's just straight up, like, progressive jazz with, like, death metal vocals. Like, let's say they go straight up, like, Gore Guts, uh, Colored Sands, which is a great record. But, like, let's say they go that direction. I'm still probably going to like it. Because I love Paul's vocals. I love Isaac's drumming. And I could straight up tell you the B-side of this release. Starting with 13 Keys. Definitely outshines the A-side. Like, I just feel like the songs on the B-side are a little bit better developed. There's like a cool, like, Dinosaur Jr., Type, like, riff that just, like, comes and goes, and then, like, creeps its way back in, and I don't even know if Kikimura know who Dinosaur Jr. are, but they did a real cool thing by, like, see, now, if I was this band, I would have released, like, just the, probably just the, the B-side as a 7-inch. Because the B-side, like, I, I, it's a, I, I just think it's, it's just better. It's a lot more, you know, it doesn't come off as, like, hey, look at how good we are. And, 
and I, anytime like I hear something like that where it's like just very well written it, it's a breath of fresh air sometimes like when you come off of something like what did I review a couple days ago that was just garbage and I, I mean no offense by it because it's gore noise it's not meant to be like you know on like a swan's level of like production but this was almost unlistenable but this is like I said normally I wouldn't give this the time of day but Luckily, like I said, I checked out the third track on this first, which is 13 Keys. That was the first song I heard, and I was like, whoa, this is kind of cool. So I told them to send, I was like, yeah, you could send the tape over and stuff. I threw the CD in the prize package, as I do not have a working CD player for January. So Grim Reefer... You have until Friday, get in touch with me. Otherwise, the person with the highest donation wins, and we already talked. So just hit me up before Friday. On the Patreon, they DM me, uh, Grim Reefer. But yeah, Kiki Mora, Curse Fires That Burn Forever. If you like jazzy metal, instrumental mostly there's like two vocal parts it says here uh incantations on tracks one and two by uh cryptergeist and we have joe perkins on guitar harvard tanner on bass and birdie actinson on drums the drumming is like legit sick on here Really, again, because it's jazzy drumming. You have to kind of be on top of the game. But really cool artwork. Again, just you don't really know what you're getting into until you throw it on. Could be black metal. But, yeah. It fits for what this is. Like, legitimately, if it's for what Kikimura bring to the table in terms of jazz-infused metal. Curse Fires That Burn Forever definitely have you covered. If you're a fan of Gorguts, but I would say more dysrhythmia based on the instrumental aspect. But again, like I said, I repress. I repress has a lot more like dissonant parts. But like stuff like this is where I'm like, all right, if I'm gonna listen to something like this, I'm gonna put on death symbolic or atheist unquestionable presence. Just telling it how it is. Like again, the, the B side of this is a lot more digestible. But Curse Fires That Burn Forever, very well written. Not really the type of metal that makes me stoked, but I know there's some of you that are going to absolutely adore this. So links will be in the video description. Kiki Mora, thank you for sending this over and making today's video possible. I'm sorry. I mean, come on. Like, like I said, I appreciate it for what it is. But at the end of the day, I'm just, I'll stick with some impiety. You know what I mean? It's just. If you're interested in technical 
music theory, jazz riddled music with a metal edge to it, then yeah, definitely, definitely check out Curse Fires That Burn Forever by Kiki Mora. And thank you again to Kiki Mora. I, I'm sorry, I do wish I had more positive things, but like I said, it's just not my cup of tea, but I know there's plenty of people out there that watch the channel that are going to be like, oh shit, that was cool. Because my guitar player was like, I know you didn't pick that out. I was like, I know. But like, I did like say like, yeah, you can send it because hey, no such thing as bad publicity. And I know that there's definitely some of you maniacs out there that are going to really, really like Curse Fires That Burn Forever by Kiki Mora and be like, you're a fucking idiot. Okay, I'm a fucking idiot then, but yeah. It's good for what it is on the B side. Again, to me, the A side it felt a little bit new metal y and noodly at times, but the B side. Again, not my cup of tea, but if I had to listen to it, I, I could sit there and be like, oh, like that's cool. Like I like what they did there. But yeah. Curse fires that burn forever. Best track on here is 13 Keys, track three, released by Spirit Guide Records. 2023. Kiki Mora. Curse fires that burn forever. To me, like I said, the songwriting is fantastic, but just not my cup of tea at the end of the day. You get it? Thanks for watching as always. You fucking rule. Hails. And peace. Yeah.